Hi, I am Naomi Thompson, a dating and relationship coach. I help people to attract incredible love. Today I'm going to talk about five dating red flags you may be blind to that are clues he is not good for you and three ways to let him show you if he is long-term material. Before I jump into this, hit the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. So what happens is, is we get so caught up by the excitement and chemistry of meeting someone that we actually really like. We can meet so many people dating that just aren't right, that as soon as we meet someone who seems like he's really great, um, we get caught up in that excitement and that chemistry. And also we get caught up in how much we really want him to be the one. And because we do that, we become blinded to any red flags. We so want him to be the one that it's like he's a blank canvas and we bestow upon him all of the qualities that we're looking for before he's even shown us if he has them. So here are five things to look out for that could be your blind spots. One is he blames his exes for the breakdown of their, his previous relationships. So when he talks about his exes, they all seem to be crazy or narcissists and he doesn't take any responsibility for the breakdown of those relationships himself. So he will paint himself as the victim and his exes as the villains. And you find yourself feeling sorry for him and defending him when your friends question you or they say, oh, you know, I'm sure he, you know, something happened with his ex or he still owes her money or something and you find yourself defending him and saying well no they were really they were a nightmare and she was crazy and she treated him so badly he's lucky to be out of there so just notice if you find yourself speaking up for him and seeing him as the victim of these crazy awful exes the second red flag is if you find yourself behaving in ways you wouldn't normally so you're drinking far more, maybe you're staying up later, you're rarely seeing your friends, or you are prioritizing time with him over time with your kids, or time with your passions, or partaking in your hobbies. The third red flag is you find yourself feeling like addicted to him, like you're craving him and his attention, like you can't get him out of your head. When you're with the right guy, it feels calm inside. Your nervous system feels calm. Your anxiety is low. You can get on with your life looking forward to seeing him, but you're not yearning for him. It's not like there's this desperate need for him. There's excitement and you're looking forward to seeing him, but it's a different feeling. You're actually calmer inside. Often we mix up um, the excitement and chemistry with um, love and connection and the excitement in chemistry is often the adrenaline of the familiar pattern of falling for someone who isn't right for us it can be very similar if our father was quite unavailable we can complete keep meeting unavailable men and we're equating that with love the fourth red flag is you, you find yourself making excuses for him and his behavior. So if he is, say, inconsistent with his contact, or you find yourself paying for dates more than he does, or he rarely takes you out, you will then have good excuses and reasons for that. Oh, he's really busy, or he's struggling at work at the moment, he hasn't got so many clients, so you know I'm gonna lend him some money, or I'm gonna pay for the dates, but he said that once everything's fine, you know, um, he's gonna do that, he'll pay me back. Or he rarely takes you out. Um, you, you're hanging out at home more than you're actually going on dates, even if they're not expensive dates. The fifth one I would say is one of the most important red flags is your closest friends are not delighted for you. Now your closest friends are the people who really know you. They've seen you losing yourself and giving up too much for the wrong guys in the past and they may be seeing that he's not bringing out the best in you. And if you were to listen to your gut feeling, even though they, some of the friends may not be really vocal about it, you can tell they're not super happy for you. So here are three tips to kind of help you discern 
if he's the right guy. These tips will kind of give you a bit of space away from the chemistry and the excitement to be able to really see if this is a good relationship for you. Tip one is to keep your focus on the relationship you really want. So the relationship you really want, your happy ever after relationship is your North Star, not the guy. So if you could see the guy in front of you here now, your North Star, your relationship you want is above and beyond him. And that's what you're focusing on. When you were single, you would have had an idea of the relationship you want, the kind of relationship you want. So keep focusing on the relationship you want and not the guy, that's tip one. Tip two is take your time. Let him show you with his consistent actions over time if he's really good for you. Pace the dates. You know, notice if you're wanting to see him five nights a week early on and shift some of that urgent energy into other areas of your life. You know, your business, your passions. And see him a few times a week to start with. And tip three is commit to the relationship and not the guy. As I said in tip one, you're focusing on the relationship you want, that's your North Star, not the guy. When we commit, and when you are committing to get married or have been in a long-term relationship, if you commit to the guy, there is, there is a, an energy shift inside of you which suddenly your happiness is dependent on him being there and him still showing up and being the kind of guy you want. And what that does, that triggers something in us that makes us want to control the outcome, makes us want to control how he's being, especially if we start getting signs and clues that maybe he's not stepping up in the way we would want him to. When we commit to the relationship, the relationship is created by two people. Well, two people and what they're both willing and able to both bring to the relationship, it helps us be more objective and see, it's like we're looking at the relationship in front of us and going, is this a good relationship for me? If he's putting in all his ingredients to the relationship pot and I'm putting in all my ing ingredients to the pot, does the relationship nourish me? Does it make me feel like I'm growing as a person? Does it make me feel safe? Does it make me feel secure and seen and known? But when we are committing to the guy, then it's like, does he see me? Does he know me? Does he make me feel safe? The, and, and that is not going to, that's gonna bring about an urgency in you. Human beings are fallible and they can never live up to all our expectations. So it's much, much more beneficial to you to commit to the relationship. So focusing on the relationship you want as your North Star and how you want to feel in that relationship will help you have clarity whether this relationship is good for you or not, no matter how invested you are or how chemistry hooked you are on the guy. Because I remember staying in relationship, I remember staying in a relationship because he had such a nice smile, he had this kind of funny dance. The relationship didn't work. The communication wasn't there. It wasn't great. But every time I looked at him, there was this guy I just loved and adored. So that's what happens when we commit to the guy. We see all their good qualities. We see all their sweetness. We see all that. But the relationship might really not be working for you. By focusing on the relationship, you take much better care of you and what you really want. And when you do focus on the relationship rather than the guy, whatever happens with him, whatever happens with him, if he decides he doesn't want to be in the relationship, if anything happens to him and he's no longer around, if, if he's unfaithful, whatever happens, you are always moving forward to the relationship you want because you know deep inside what he wants. So I hope that's been really helpful for you. And I will just summarize again how to know. One, he blames his exes for the breakdown of the relationship and you find yourself defending him and feeling sorry for him. Two, you find yourself behaving in ways you wouldn't normally. 
Three, you feel addicted to him and craving him and kind of can't get him out of your head and you kind of feel like quite um, excited and, and pumped up. Four, you find yourself being making excuses for behavior that actually doesn't feel good for you, but you, you make excuses to, to, um, to make yourself feel better about staying with him despite that behavior. And five, your closest friends are not delighted for you. You know, they are the people who know you best. Tip one, keep your focus on the relationship you want. Tip two, take your time, let him show you who he is. And tip three, commit to the relationship you want, not the guy. Subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in learning more, check out my low cost program, Have the Deep Connected Love You Dream Of. And you can also get my free audio training. I'll pop all the links in the description below. Mwah.